one's ready because the final Manhattan Henge is happening today and tomorrow. And for those who might not know, the event occurs when the sun appears between the grid of the city as it begins to set or rise. And joining us now to talk more about the phenomenon is Jackie Faraday. She is an astronomer at the American Museum of Natural History. Welcome. Hi, Cindy. So I know we talked uh, briefly about what it is, but you know, uh, from a scientific standpoint, what happens during Manhattan Henge? Yes. Yeah, so most people don't necessarily realize, but if you go outside and watch sunset every day, you'd see that it is at a slightly different position. Mm. Almost every day, aside from the two solstices, the first day of summer and the first day of winter. So it kind of ping pongs in its position along your horizon in um, from solstice to solstice. And these days, the Manhattan Henge days, which are calculated by myself with a time mm -hmm. that I can give you where you can go outside and see it, uh, are the days where the sun in its ping ponging position on your horizon lands like a bullseye on the exact um, position of the grid of Manhattan. So that every single side street from 14th Street all the way up to Northern Manhattan, you could stand in the middle of the street, have a clear view to New Jersey, and see the sun right at the moment that it's about to go below the horizon, line up perfectly and light up the canyon of wow. New York City. All right, so how many times does this happen? And does the sun, you were saying differs each time, but if it's right on the bullseye, is it different? So it's symmetric on either side of the solstice. Since the sun ping pongs between mm -hmm. its position on your horizon, between the winter solstice and the summer solstice, in May, you get the first of the Manhattan Henges, where the sun reaches so far north as it's setting that it lines up with the grid. Then the summer solstice happens, and it's a little higher, a little mm -hmm. higher, a little higher, because we get more sun sunlight, the sun's in the sky for longer, and then after the summer solstice, the days get shorter, and the sun has a lower and lower angle on the sky, and in July, we get it to hit that same position it did in May again, and then it won't happen again. That's why there's two Manhattan Hinge dates, one in May and one in July. Okay, so just two. Two. All right, so even though the view, you were saying the views are kind of the same everywhere, um, are there best places to view yeah, Manhattan so Hinge? I always tell people to pick your favorite building. So it's kind of like thinking of the buildings as a framing mm -hmm. for it. And we're actually doing an event tonight at the American Museum of Natural History. And so one of the ways that I like to view it is on 79th Street, ah. right outside of the museum. And if the weather cooperates, we've got a street closing, we'll be outside, uh, and we're gonna have a salsa band. So if you wanna know my favorite place to watch it, <laughs> it's gonna be on 79th Street. And if you wanna hear more about it, you can come into the museum, and I'm gonna be giving a public talk about it uh, right before the event, explaining the history, the science, in way more detail. I learned so much from you, Jackie. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate I'm it. I'm happy to. I hope, I hope the weather cooperates today because the one thing we can't control is the weather. Is the weather and the clouds. <laughs> so we'll beg John Elliott. Yeah, yeah. Ask John <laughs> to get that cloud clearing machine.